All right, just want to do a quick comparison of the two vehicles. This is a 2020 Jeep Gladiator on a two inch Mopar lift and 37 inch tired. Even have it loaded down with a rooftop tent. Uh, all the goodies, this is my vehicle. Uh, but I just want to compare it to the Bronco. So this is the 2021 Bronco Badlands Edition uh, non-Sasquatch. But I've since added 35 inch tires. And wanna just do a quick comparison of the stance on this thing. That Badlands sits just as high as my Jeep with a two inch lift versus the Bronco Badlands with no lift. Uh, they're pretty nose to nose. I mean, you can obviously see the difference in the tires and the height, side to side. So you can see a little bit of that height. But other than that, they sit pretty equally side by side. Um, I've given a little bit of details on, you know, the, the accessories I've added to the Bronco. See a little bit of the white stripe out here outside. But just wanted to give a quick little view of what these things look side by side. Non-Sasquatch, 35 inch versus a Gladiator uh, with a two inch lift and 37s. Uh, Height-wise, they're almost equal. All right, I just wanted to provide a, a little bit of a sort of what I needed to do to what I like to call sort of a self-squatch for a Sasquatch. So this is the 21 Badlands version, non-Sasquatch. I've added a few upgrades, uh, a few little details, uh, pinstriping that adds at least 10 horsepower, joking. And then, you know, little transcript uh, scripts. Uh, I got this on a, I think it's called Ridgeline. I'll, I'll put the exact location on the, in the comments uh, with the link to where I got this, as well as, this is a magnet, a uh, really cool option to sort of add anywhere that metal. Uh, and then the KMC, these are the Dirty Harry, uh, obviously in the bronze. And then I had some Wild Peak MT 35 inch tires that I actually had from my uh, Jeep that had been sitting in the garage. So, so all in all, I really only had to pay for the wheels themselves. I had to buy one more spare tire and then that was able to get me my 35s. And then I'm still trying to sell my original Badlands tire. So if you are interested in some Badlands tires and wheels, please hit me up. But overview of the look of what a Sasquatch package, non-Sasquatch package looks like with a Badlands, which I believe comes with a, like an inch higher lift. Give you a little bit of a look on, there is poke, right? So these are the non-Sasquatch fender flares. Uh, I just washed this, so got all the salt and dirt off of it, but you are gonna get a lot, a lot of spray uh, coming up off the wheels. Uh, I am looking at maybe going up to the Sasquatch fender flares, which should be really easy to do. I just uh, will provide a little bit of detail later on in the video of how I just cleaned up the wiring on this uh, light bar from Heretic Studios. Awesome light bar, low wind noise, if anything at all. And of course, I still have the, sa the soft top like everybody else. And uh, even when I screwed up the, the wiring and I had wiring coming up and over this area, the, the wind noise was minimal. But I've now cleaned that up, so there's, there's really gonna be nothing, no extra wires that are poking out. So I have the Heretic light bar, and then I have, I, I like the KC Flex Aero 3s uh, for the pod lights. I bought these, uh, I'll, I'll send the link of where I got these brackets. Uh, I ended up having to paint them because they come in just a uh, bare steel, uh, which was easy, even though my paint job sort of sucks. But I really like the backlight on these. Uh, I'll try to show that here in a second of what the backlight looks like. Maybe right now. All right, quick view of the backlight. I don't know if you can see that on camera. There's a very subtle backlight for the Flex Aero 3s. So you can sort of see how that, you know, during the day is very subtle, but at night it sticks out a little bit more adds to the overall look and style with the orange uh, tint. So again, the Badlands comes with the Bilstein shocks. Uh, I don't know if I can even get in there. 
and you do come with uh, so the nicer shocks uh, you got a little bit of a higher uh, lift on it so you got the, the badlands uh, sort of benefits and have not having to pay the extra cost of a sasquatch package especially when you think you're going to probably go with your own wheels and tires why spend that extra money on a sasquatch package when you can do it yourself I'm going to take it off road here in the next week to sort of see and flex it out and see how that plays out. The other thing I would put on here is the pod lights uh, from Fle uh, Heretic Studios. They are awesome. And I have them wired up to two different switches. So when I do have them on, I can do one or the other. I like having the amber lights below the main lights. And then, of course, you have the light bar and the ditch lights to really sort of bring out the the details of the, the area. So it really does a full sort of spectrum of lights uh, when you're on the trail. Other than that, I've done a, sort of just a lettering overlay. I'll see if I can find a link to that as well. Uh, easy stuff to do. I mean, all these things I've done myself. So I order them online, even the pinstriping. Uh, my wife and I just spent maybe an hour or two uh, to put those on. Turned out really well, a little heat gun action to sort of clean it up and then just, you know, line it all up uh, all the way down. They come pre-cut in separate pieces, so that makes it super easy to put on. You sort of see both sides. So we're trying to do a little bit of the, the retro style and with the white and the orange as the accent colors. The last little detail might be a little dark. I just updated that Ford emblem with another sticker. It's sort of 3D, so you can actually tell it's got a little bit of a 3D feel to it with the, the background. Changes a little bit of the, the coloring there. I still need to do the, the horse on the far side uh, from the chrome. And then now that'll be the last little sort of detail, uh, sort of what I need to do on the outside uh, to keep this going. But my wife loves this. I mean, she's the main driver of this vehicle. She loves the look, the stance it has with it. Uh, it really helps sort of make it look like a Sasquatch without necessarily all the cost of a Sasquatch. And since we're going to customize it ourselves, this just seemed like an easy way to do it. So anyways, uh, if you have any questions on wiring of these, I used all the auxiliary lighting that came with the Bronco. Uh, it was super easy. The hardest one was the light bar, which I have a video on. And then just I've added a few details on the cleanup I just did on that. And then... The other thing for the Sasquatch package is you do have to remove the crash bars. Uh, super easy. I was able to just go through and uh, just loosen this section and that gave me enough room to pull those out. It's also easier to pull these out before you put the bigger tires on. And you have both of those front and back. And other than that, just driving around town, there's no rubbing. Uh, it's been super easy. Uh, just took it down a discount tire and they mounted and balanced it for me and the other question that i i had when i first put this on was the the backlight fits just fine with 35s i mean it's really tight but when you're following uh the bronco you can't tell that it's not obstructed at all and it's super easy to see uh from that so you don't need to add an extra bracket on there you don't need to adjust it uh it just works so you can go 35s without having to adjust the, the bracket. All right, I just wanted to provide a update. I got some comments on the YouTube video uh, for my light bar install about how to wire the light bar. And as you can see, I still haven't fully fixed my wiring, but he gave me some good suggestions on how to uh, put uh, the wiring and the ground uh, just underneath the, the bracket here. So. I was going to take a crack at that, uh, and I thought I'd just film a little bit of the process and some of the update. All right, so this is where I ended up last time. Uh, I ended up having a bunch of the, the wiring harness that I tucked into this weather stripping, and I have a ton of it. Uh, it's probably just more than I needed, uh, obviously. And then I uh, have this ugly hack job of trying to get the stuff over the weather strip. Uh, but the feedback was to cut right along here or closer before the 
the Deutsch connector, uh, which sounds like a great idea. So I'm going to give that a shot, uh, give myself enough playroom. If I do need to reconnect it, I can just rewire this stuff back in uh, and then pull all the wiring back in here. So I don't even need to come over the weather stripping. So I'm going to give that a shot and go from there. All right, so you can see underneath it, this is the uh, the location of the the wire that comes uh, with the Bronco, where I had it wired up to my hot wire. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably cut it more closer to here, uh, and then wire it directly into the harness uh, directly there. So all that can be underneath the bracket. And I'm gonna try to tap into this screw here for my ground. Uh, and try to uh, have the granny spot right here and that way I can just get rid of all this wiring up to up to that point not to clean up my Junk up here All right, so one of the things I wanted to call out is this wire that does come out of uh, From the Bronco. It was really short. So really hard to get uh, a good uh, Connection with that in the sense that it was just a, not a whole lot of time So if you not a whole lot of wire to work with so if you screwed up you're sort of screwed. Uh, so anyway, I'm not going to cut below that. I'm actually going to try to give myself a little bit of room here as far as my wire uh, that went into the Deutsch connector and so forth, as well as the ground, uh, so I can play with a little extra wire and not feel like I am so short on the wire. But just keep that in mind that that wire that does come out of the Bronco is really short. All right, so took a little bit to get the, the weather stripping off of the the old harness, uh, but got them stripped. I'm using these soldering uh, crimps instead of like the usual butt crimps you see on YouTube videos. Uh, they just, you know, once that's melted, it's essentially solders these two pieces together. And also I hook them uh, instead of just wrap them together. It provides a stronger sort of seal. And you got a good weather seal on both ends of that, as well as I could have some more shrink wrap that it, once everything is wired up, I'll push that all the way up and over all these wires. So the whole thing should be uh, weather stripped or weather protected. All right, so before I button things up again, just wanted to sort of give a good overview of the wiring. So we've got the positive and negative. I did scrape a little bit of paint from underneath that bolt, which will eventually be underneath the entire bracket there uh, and tested with a multimeter and then just tested the power uh, recent, just now uh, to make sure it all turned on. So far, all tested out great. Just need to put all it up, clean up the mess, and go from there. All right, everything's packaged away, uh, clamped down. You can sort of see the wire is just minimal. I can tuck that probably down just a little bit more right into there. Uh, on that, I'm just gonna do it a quick test. That's on. And Boom. Everything works and a lot cleaner. Thanks for the comments, Ted. Appreciate it.